this like separation between industry and academia is less of a clear distinction than I think people realize. Mm-hmm. Like if you go into industry and you do great research, you can have a tremendous impact. For sure. And you might not necessarily have to publish it in order to get you know tenure and attract students, but you're still doing research. You're still doing great work. In academia, your research goal is to produce a paper, or if you're a PhD student, to ultimately produce a thesis, which is a document that you can hold in your hand. The research in industry is designed to produce a product or uh, solve some foundational challenge separating your company from its current state and its product. In, in industry, fundamentally, you care that something works and you want to be able to explain it, but there's not necessarily the as much pressure to come up with the most elegant solution, the most fundamental solution, the most impressive solution. Just the first solution. You, you want something that works, that works well, that yeah. you can defend, that's debuggable, that's right. robust. Uh, and it's better to have something working now than to take it like a little bit further for no performance gain and six more months of work. Mm-hmm. Like when you're up against like production deadlines, it, it needs to work now. So there's a little bit less of the ability to explore to your heart's content. Like if you want in the PhD program and you know your, your advisor supports it, you can dive as deep as you want to learn every little nook and cranny of your field. Mm-hmm. In industry, like once you've met your target, you've met your target. And uh, unless you know there's spare time around, like you, your manager is probably gonna want you to move on to the next thing. Another uh, difference is that in academia, you know, your professor and your visions for the future of the field and uh, the other the few practical tr- constraints will dictate what you work on. In industry, and of course in, in my case specifically, what I worked on was directly related to company goals. So if the company goals aren't interesting to you, then maybe you should work at a different company. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was working on broadly uh, data center congestion control at Meta, which is highly related to my thesis. The project that I worked on is uh, going to be a part of my thesis. Uh, It's a combination of work done by Meta employees and extensions that I did myself in a more theoretical research oriented way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's going to come together well. And you know, this is the work that, that Kevin contributed to and, and his contributions were incredibly significant in, in building a simulator that has allowed us to demonstrate the uh, in a pure network environment situations that we have been evaluating on Meta's production network. And this has been very valuable. So beyond networking with the data centers, what are some other bigger research projects that Meta um, sponsors? As uh, everybody is aware, like AI and machine learning is is a huge focus right now. Of course, like uh, the metaverse is a is a huge like focus of of, of work at, at Meta in the, in the last eighteen months. Uh, and whether or not you you buy into the metaverse is like a kind of a up to each individual person. I generally think that uh, I'm very excited for the metaverse even if it's not quite ready for, for me yet. There's, there's a lot of like work on both hardware and software infrastructure for, for that, of course. That makes sense. You got to learn a little bit more about the world of academia as a PhD student. You're definitely mm-hmm. like seeing these things firsthand. Uh, what are some things about perhaps just academia in general that you didn't expect coming in? A, a lot of people give this as a, as a benefit of a PhD. You shouldn't go to industry because in industry, you only get to work on what the company wants you to work on. And in academia, you get to work on whatever you want. That's not true, not true at all. Uh, First off, in industry, you can work on anything you want. You just go and work for whatever company you want. Uh, Second off, uh, in academia, you are constrained by what the faculty want to work on and what there is funding for. Uh, Generally speaking, faculty have large research directions, which are partially determined by how they have applied for grants and and also where they envision the field going in the future and their own personal interests and their expertise. So I'm sure that a lot of people have the perception that like when you come in to do a PhD, chances are you're going to be a professor or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Um, So what are some things that you perhaps didn't know about, you know, joining academia, being a professor that you know now that maybe made you sway the other direction? It's a great question. Like whether 
Whereas what do you want to do with the outcome of your PhD? And there are basically like three clear options that most people take. Either you take your PhD and you go back into industry and you are um, a software engineer, an entrepreneur. Option number two is you go work for a research lab, something like a national laboratory. The third option, which is probably what most people assume people do, is become a professor. Uh, it's really up to what is right for, for you, your environment, your vision for your future, uh, and whether you, know, you can, whether, whether the stars align and you get the faculty job that you want. A lot of people think that when you go into a PhD, it's like a default that you can become a professor. And the truth is that if you want to become a computer science professor at a top university, it's very competitive. And not a lot of it's in your control or even in the control of, you know, all, of the whole candidate pool. Fundamentally, like when you offer a faculty hiring role, you are saying, I would like to work with you for the next rest of my life, possibly. So a department is going to be very selective. And if they have one opening and they interview five people and they decide, oh, you know, none of these people are quite right, that might not make an offer. It's not the same where in industry, your manager says, okay, we need to hire somebody. We're going to hire a person, interview these five people, you know, pick one. That's, that's, that's not it. Also the academic lifestyle is, is a specific lifestyle that part of a PhD is to learn whether you like the academic lifestyle and the academic lifestyle is kind of tangential to the research lifestyle. You can have the research lifestyle in industry or international lab, but being a professor, is something very specific. Like as a professor, you are the captain of your little bubble. You have this little bubble of, of capability, you and your students, and you are driving that like towards the future of like some subfield. There's a lot of responsibility to make sure that your PhD students are well taken care of. Their experience and their life depends on you as an advisor guiding them well through their PhD. Uh, and making sure that they're on track and are working on interesting, relevant things. You have to make sure that you have the money to pay them and yourself. And it's, it's a lot of stress and a lot of responsibility. The benefit is that um, you, you earn a lot of respect. It's a very respected field. After several years of being a professor, you can earn tenure at your university, which is the pinnacle of job security. Um, and you are viewed as a world authority on your particular subject. You're, you can right. be called as a expert you know, by the media. Right. Uh, the downside is it's a lot of responsibility and it is very stressful. And consequently, it is a very personally taxing profession. The caveat there is it's more and more common for professors to do startups, to gather some of their colleagues and PhD students mm -hmm. and found a company based on their research. And there have been many of the professors in my sphere who have done that. It's very appealing, very interesting, and very exciting. Databricks? Oops. Databricks out of Berkeley is a good example. Yeah. Um, Andy Pablo, Ottertune. Yes. Um, there are a few other professors as well here who have done startups. Some of my colleagues who graduated went to work for those startups. Some of those startups were bought by big companies and they made a lot of money. Like There is this opportunity. There's the trade-off. The, yeah, there, there's this, this, this trade-off yeah. with the possibility for a great entrepreneurial opportunity. Right. And what were some of the things you realized um, were worth more than money? Like the things that you would only get in a PhD where you were like, you know what, this, this kind of um, sacrifice is worth it. The uh, potential future career opportunities, the doors that are open that you can only have with, uh, access to with a PhD and, and the people. Like yeah, I've, I've worked in many industry internships. I've enjoyed all my colleagues across, the, you know, across all of my experiences. I've never worked with someone that I didn't like. Um, I just have found that the academic environment, PhD students, faculty advisors, to be really inspirational. Mm -hmm. And that their breadth of knowledge across the field of computer science and their depth in their particular field leads to the creation of ideas that you don't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And that ability to come up with completely novel, exciting ideas that move the world forward really attracted me to the PhD process.